Today started with a buffet breakfast in the matzal. Good cheese, good bread, field milk and granola. We bought our boat ticket for the ride north over Suarvayara to the bus that would take us to Vakarovar. The Kungsleden hikers that are purest walk this section of road. Our bus passed some of them at 70 kilometers an hour. I'm not so pure. The bus stopped for about an hour at the halfway point for a driver change and fika. Uni was enjoying some ice cream named after her when our bus driver walked into the combined restaurant and gift shop with the other driver. And as they passed us, he said to him in Swedish, they couldn't be that dumb, could they? They found the missing passengers on the other bus. After a careful head count, we headed north. Suddenly, the bus pulled to the side of the road and opened its doors. We got off at Vakarovara cabin, which was just meters from the road. Without planning it, we realized that we had all taken some bread, butter, cheese, and poleg, which is sandwich meat from Salta Lucas breakfast buffet to eat for lunch. I'm not recommending it. It's not the right thing to do, but it is what we did. Lunch with this beautiful view, followed by a steep climb and heavy winds and light rain. My backpack was heavy with a fresh resupply. I caught up with my tramley at the motorboat crossing for Tushayara. Bao made me a sandwich using a tortilla and some of the bacon cheese in a tube that I showed you in an earlier video. After the motorboat ride, we resupplied and made dinner at a picnic table near the cabin. At the top of a steep climb, Bao again found us some nice tent spots looking back over the valley. So you walk around, or walk along, while following the blazes. You can come up over a little ridge. It's not too bad. Today was a 20 mile day, more than 30 kilometers. 
The big realization for me was that it was a long day, but nowhere near as tough as our first full day when we hiked basically the same distance all the way to Tarnafrostugana. Was I in better shape? Maybe the terrain is easier on the northern end of Kungsleden? If you've hiked it already, what do you think? If not, when you do hike it, pay attention to the differences and leave a comment below. If someone is going to hike just part of Kungsleden, which part would you recommend? It was a great hike up to Kaitmanyara. The reindeer made a point of saying hi to Yuni. Kaitmanyara has the best outhouse. I met both the outgoing and the incoming cabin hosts. They offered me soft, but I had to decline because my mug was buried deep in my pack. Check out my Q&A video coming out at the end of this series for changes I'm going to make for next time. One thing for sure is that I'm going to stay here. The views are breathtaking. The outhouse alone makes it worth a long visit. I headed north towards Singy after a short break with Bao and Caroline. What can I say about Singy? I had seen several places that Singy is a great place to just hike past. It's a nice enough cabin. The views are spectacular like everywhere else along Kungsleden. You might decide to head east to Nikalukta or to climb Kebnekaisa. Watch all the trails in this area very carefully though. There are lots of them and they all have red blazes. They don't all go where you would like them to go. Compared to Singi, Selkit is the place to be. A store, chocolate and other snacks, pop, food, a picnic table out of the wind. We met a young German man while we were eating here. He was maybe still in his teens. He was near tears. His sister had just gone home as planned, and now he had to hike alone. He said he was lonely over and over again, but I think he was really scared. We encouraged him the best we could. Caroline was able to talk with him in German, which seemed to comfort him a lot.
Bao's superpower seems to be finding excellent camping spots. After dinner, we hiked north where he found the perfect spot again. After I settled into my sleeping bag, I heard noises right outside my tent. I knew it wasn't a bear, but until I unzipped the rainfly, I didn't know that a herd of reindeer stopped by to say goodnight to Uni and me. It was cold last night. A little frost on the tent never hurt anyone. Being so far north, the sun stays low near the horizon, giving long shadows until late in the morning. We're going to go up and over at Chak Chak Pass today. It's the highest point on Kunzladen. This is the direction I'm hiking today. But as always, remember, turn around and look behind you. That's where I came from beyond the bend a few hours ago. where I'm going. The views down the valley leading to Chakcha Pass are memorable, very memorable. Here are Bao and Caroline. We're on our way to the top. We stopped for dinner in the emergency shelter on Chakcha Pass. Some people we had met before stopped too. Everyone emptied their packs of extra food, especially snacks and chocolate. We helped each other eat all this extra weight. We're only two days from Abisko now, so everyone knows that extra food is just extra weight. With all the people and all the stoves, the emergency hut warmed up very nicely. It had become our routine to have dinner and then walk for an hour or so before stopping for the night. Today was no exception. We passed Chak Chestugana, which was too far off the trail to be interesting to us. We found a nice little prairie to set up in. It was windy, but we were almost home. Today was definitely the day of the reindeer. I'll give you some extended views so you can get a sense of how they interact with each other. Sorry about the zoomed in images being a little fuzzy. They wouldn't come to me when I called them. When my Q&A video comes out at the end of this series, I'll let you know my plans for next time. I really need to get better image quality.
Ala Jaura Stugana came into view many miles before we were close to it. It made the hike seem like it took much longer than it really did. The windows facing south over the bridge give a view that rivals Kaitumyara. Yuni and I took time to Fika and to look over the hiking plan for today. We started a little south of Alajaura and we were hoping to make it past Abiskoyaura all the way to Nisonyok. We followed Kungsleden up the west side of Alajaura. The helicopter landed just long enough to triage a patient and to load them up. I hope it was a wilderness delivery rather than the pickup of an injured hiker. I stopped to talk with a class of Danish students who were on their first backpacking trip. I remember looking that tired just a couple weeks ago. changed very gradually during the day from overcast to light sprinkles to a solid rain. I was very thankful for my rain pants today. Kungsleden got very narrow on the side of a hill leading up to our campsite. We fell asleep listening to the water rush under the bridge that we would cross first thing in the morning. This may not have been the most beautiful campsite Bao had found us, but it was absolutely the best available in the area. For the first time, I did not leave camp first today. Caroline was getting out of her tent just as I was finishing up my packing. She filled my water bladder for me at the bridge so we could get hiking sooner. We made a quick stop at Alajawa Stugana for a snack and continued north along the east side of Alajawa. It was a hiking day. We kept moving and the weather was great. Bao caught up to me and we finished the hike to Nisanyok, where we set up camp for the night. We made a quick run without our packs into Abisko and back again. returned to camp, some women from Latvia were making dinner with real food and a heavy frying pan. They were car camping their way to Norway. They were making some kind of a stir fry and invited me to eat their leftovers. Unfortunately, I had to eat straight from the cooking pan because they had filled my mug with wine. Several people joined us that evening, including Bao and Caroline. We spent the evening talking around an old wooden pallet that simulated a fire ring. This was a fantastic way to spend our last night on Kungsleden.
finally able to check out my bruise from two weeks ago when we got to our hostel. I can't imagine how big it was when I first got it. We did a lot of damage to the breakfast buffet at the Obisco Mountain Station with the friends we had met over the last few weeks. Uni embarrassed me with all the food she ate. She can't stop talking about our next adventure together. As I wrap up the Kungsleden trip reports with pictures to remind you of the beautiful views, I want to let you know that a Q&A video is also in the works. It'll be the final video in this series and should come out a couple weeks after this one. Be sure to leave any questions or comments below so I can include them. I will also be sharing the changes I'll be making next time. You may be surprised at some. I hope you've been enjoying this video series, and even if you haven't, please be sure to share this video with those adventurous friends of yours. See you later. Bye. Oh, yeah.